calling your attention to Exhibit A, I'd like to ask you a question. When the police entered your apartment, did they find this garment in your bedroom? Yes. Will you tell the court where you got it? I stole it. That will be all. One minute, please. I don't have to write my story. I know it by heart. Judge Cabot reads beautiful lecture on morality to girl and sets her free. After she's admitted everything? I bet you two to one she takes a rap. You got yourself a bet. How old are you? Twenty-one. How old is your baby? Three months. Where is your husband? I don't know. He, he went away just after the baby came. I was weak. I couldn't work. I didn't want to steal, but I had to do something. Lewis Blake, I sentence you to one year in the state prison for women, but will suspend sentence and place you on probation. Case dismissed. Next case, the people versus Harvey Martin. Is the state ready? The state is ready to proceed, Your Honor. Come in. Hello, Stephen. Hello. There's something of the gravest importance to tell you. Not serious. Very. Well, you haven't resigned a special prosecutor. It concerns you personally. Well, what is it? Where were you on the night of June the 15th? I was walking in the moonlight in a very lovely garden with a very nice young man. Thanks, but I'll be 45 next month. What were you telling this babe in arms? Now, let me see, what was it? Oh, yes. I was telling him no. That I didn't want to, but it was much better that way. He seemed so disappointed. Say, what have you got against marriage anyway? Some of my best friends have been married for years and think nothing of it. Well, that doesn't change my mind. I know I'm not perfect, but think of the fun you'd have reforming me. Now, Stephen, it's much better this way. Just two very good friends. Would money tempt you? I could pick up some nice juicy bribes and then we could be rich. No. Well, maybe I could fool enough of the people enough at the time, be elected governor, and then you could run the state. No. Well, then I'll run for president, you could be first lady. Now will you say yes? No. Oh, lady, can't you say anything but no? <laughs> I'm sorry, Stephen. I really got to be running along. No, no. Hold on. I'm going to take you to dinner. No, not tonight. Oh. I have an engagement with a very dear friend. A birthday party. I don't want to miss. You understand, don't you? Well, some comfort to know that you're not entirely dead to sentiment. I'm really a very sentimental person. When you get to know me. Lovely, Bertha. How happy Virginia would be if she could see it. I'll blow out the candles for her. And we'll see how many years it is before she's married. <sighs> Two more years. Last year, the candles only said one. I wish they'd hurry and make up their minds. I've been humoring you with this for 17 years. If it would do any good, I wouldn't mind. You just brood more and more. It seems so little to do for her memory. But people don't give up their whole lives for memories. Besides, we don't even know whether she's alive or... Oh, don't. Don't say it. Of course she's living somewhere. And in one hour and 15 minutes, she'll be exactly 20 years old. She's getting to be quite a grown-up young lady, isn't she? But don't you think if we were ever to find her, we would have done so long ago? I'll never give up hoping. She was so little. Why, you wouldn't even know her if you met her on the street. This is for you. Why don't you go out more with Mr. Graham? He seems very nice to me. Have you two been talking again? Well, what if we have? It's just as easy to keep house for two as it is for one. And he'd make you a mighty fine husband. That'll be enough, you old matchmaker. I quite agree. But I'm not thinking of marrying anybody. No matter who that is, I won't see them. I won't see anyone tonight.
Hello, Bertha. Oh, Mr. Graham. We were just talking about you. Yeah? Well, and uh, what was the verdict? Well, I don't know what I'm going to do with her. She's that stubborn. Yes, I know. Employers do get out of hand now and then. What's the grief this time, Bertha? Well, I wanted to go out more. Right. With you. With me? Oh, my pal. <laughs> oh, stop it now. Stop it. <laughs> what would people think? No, never mind what people think. What did she say? She said she couldn't see anyone this evening. Now, isn't that a shame? Yes, it is. Especially since I took a chance in reserving a couple of theater tickets for tonight. Tickets? Hmm. Have you got them with you? Yeah, right here. Shall we go? Hmm? <laughs> oh, you are the one. Wait here. I'll work on her some more. Yeah, that girl. <laughs> It's Mr. Graham. He has an important message. Well, what is it? He has to tell you himself. He's waiting. Bertha, I told you very distinctly that I would not see anyone tonight. And he told me just as distinctly that if you couldn't come out, he was coming in. Now, do you want him to find you here alone with that? What could you tell him? How could you explain? Oh, Bertha. Go on out and see him. It'll do you good. Stephen. Well, here's your little boyfriend. I told you you couldn't get away from me. I'm not going out with you tonight, if that's what you're getting at. Well, maybe not. But starting next week, I'm going to have you practically sitting on my lap every day for a month, with nothing but a mere bench between us. What are you talking about? Lady, you can kiss all your little shoplifters and sneak thieves goodbye. You're coming over to play in my bag here at Department 7. But I'm scheduled to move into Department 4. You were. Well, I happened to run into the presiding justice after you left the courthouse. He seemed to think it was a shame to waste your brilliant talents on routine cases. He said you had no business handling small-time stuff, that you belonged in the big league, where your fairness, honesty, and courage for fighting injustice could be made a public benefit. He said the greatest thing about you was your refusal to be bluffed or tricked by powerful interests. He also said... Wait a minute. The... Who said all this? Well, the, uh, the, the... Well, I did. You're incorrigible. Well, you can see for yourself it's no good getting tough with me. Mary, why don't you try agreeing with everything I suggest for a while, and then uh, maybe I'll lose interest. Well, what would you suggest for this evening? Oh, wait a minute now. How am I going to approach this thing? I have two theater tickets in my pocket that I'd hate to turn back unused. I've got it. Mary, I suggest that you thank me very nicely for the good news and just send me about my business, if any. I'll be ready in a few minutes. No, we're getting someplace. <laughs> Being tried in front of that woman judge is plain suicide, Ryan. She's a born crusader. You haven't a chance in the world. Stephen Graham got the indictment, didn't he? Yeah, he won't do us any good. He's out to make a name for himself. Jimmy, see who that is. Well, if you're worried about the case coming up before Judge Cabot, forget it. Oh, cut the double talk, Harper. What are you driving at? Just this. Stephen Graham and Judge Cabot are very close friends. It'll be easy to get her disqualified on those grounds, which will automatically rule her off the case. I think I got something there, Tim. Gordy and Justine are here. Relax, boys. I couldn't pick a safer judge in a hundred years than Judge Cabot. She's made the order for me. For us both? Yeah. Girls at the camp should search your apartment. Is there anything there they could find? Why? What's the matter? Well, things aren't just as they should be. A couple of the girls were picked up yesterday. So if you've got anything around the apartment that the cops shouldn't see, why, well, destroy it. We never keep anything like that. No, we could take a pinch any time. But uh, if you're going to close down, how about Gertie and me running out of town for a little vacation? Yes, well, we could take it easy. You can take it easy right here. Now, this will hold you over for a few days. I'll go on home. And just see that she doesn't go on a liquid diet. Oh, you know me, boss. You bet I do. I'll take care of her. Say, Tim, I've been thinking. Stop thinking for a while. You just play smart and I'll play dumb and we'll lick this in one short session. I'm going to set an all-time record for dumbness. 
Anything they get out of me, they're going to have to blast out. All I'm going to say is, I don't remember. Now, Mr. Ryan, let me refresh your memory about the evidence thus far given. Some time ago, there were several arrests made in connection with the numbers racket. Among them, one uh, Mike Malloy, gentleman sitting over there, who was recently released from the county jail after serving six months. Upon his release, he celebrated by getting drunk and boasting that the $3,000 you paid him to keep your name out of his trial was the easiest money he ever earned in his life. Mr. Malloy had over $3,000 on him when he was arrested for being drunk and disorderly. And he very wisely decided to tell the truth about how he came into possession of so much money. By naming you as the one who paid it to him for protecting you. Now, Mr. Ryan, on the day Mr. Malloy was released, didn't you instruct your attorney, Mr. Harper, to go to the bank and draw $3,000 in cash and bring it to you? Object. Privilege communication. Matter between counsel and client cannot be brought into testimony. Forbidden by the Code of Civil Procedure. Objection sustained. Defendant cannot be compelled to reveal what passes between himself and his attorney. Proceed. I will reframe the question. Mr. Ryan, did you or did you not pay or cause to be paid to one Michael Malloy the sum of $3,000? Where would I ever get a hold of any such sum as $3,000? $3,000 is peanuts compared to what you take out of the poultry racket every day in the week. Object. Improper inference. I withdraw the statement. Easier said than done, Mr. Prosecutor. Your Honor, a statement having no direct bearing upon the matter at issue has been made that unquestionably must put some doubt or prejudice into the minds of the jury against this defendant. We therefore ask for a declaration of mistrial and a dismissal of the case. Your Honor, the statement cannot possibly affect the jury's verdict, which in any case will be based on evidence, not on anyone's unguarded statement. We insist upon an immediate declaration of mistrial. Do I understand, Mr. Harper, that you are ordering the actions of this court? I beg the court's pardon. I'm sorry. The court will take the matter under advisement and rule upon it tomorrow morning at 10. Until then, court is adjourned. Can I stay with Mr. Graham? Can I stay with Mr. Mr. Graham? Give me something I can friend. Boys, if you want to know what it feels like to be a first-class chump, ask me. I know. Judge Cabot declares a mistrial. What will it do to your case? Nothing. It'll only delay putting Ryan where he belongs behind bars. Well, Thank you. What just hit the street? Big Tim hanging by an eyebrow while a woman judge makes up her mind. Boy, oh boy, if that isn't something. Read it. Those familiar with Judge Cabot's decisions predict she will deny the motion for mistrial. Maximum sentence, 10 years. Yeah, and on 13 separate counts. That ought to make him about 190 when he gets out. Funny how things work out. Ryan uses women to do his dirty work, and now he's being judged by a woman. No. You needn't cheer about it. Big Tim may be a bad boy, but he still pays good money. And if he goes bye-bye, we quit eating. We haven't made a dime since he was pinched. And the bank rolls shrinking like a spring suit in a thunderstorm. Wouldn't it be funny if she did send him up? Yes. I'd die laughing. I would not. See these three loathsome little dollars? Well, they're the last of the tribe. And there aren't going to be any more till Tim gets out and things start rolling again. One, fifty, six. Um, well, I've still got two dollars. Oh, that's swell. Five bucks between the two of us, and the rent ain't paid. And the landlady was here again. Yeah, I know. She put the bite on me out in the hall. What are we going to do for money? I've got an idea. Hey, where are you going with that gun? Not to get some money. Oh, wait a minute. Take it easy. We're not that hard up. Say, what's the matter with you? Can't I hug the old Betsy without you throwing a fit? Oh, say, what'd you think I was going to do? Stick somebody up? <laughs> you must think I'm awful simple these days. Answer that. If it's the cops, give me the office, and I'll ditch this out the window. Hello. You're 
alone. Why, Tim, you old darling. You came to the rescue just in the nick of time. I was just on my way out to hock the last resort when you rang the bell. It's loaded. Yeah, that's just a shower, not a blower. I wouldn't actually shoot anybody. You know that. You better let me keep this. Now, you take a little walk, will you, Gertie? I want to have a talk with Justine. Come on, have a nice little walk for yourself for about ten minutes. Sorry, I can't offer you anything but a chair. There's no drink in the house. Well, I see you're keeping up with what's going on. Yeah. Are you in as tough as they say, or is it all just talk? It all depends. If I get a mistrial, all my troubles will be over. You think you'll get it? That's what I want to talk to you about. Me? What could I do? Seventeen years ago, Judge Cabot lost her three-year-old daughter. You mean the kid died? No, no, her father took her away. Cabot moved heaven and earth to find her. Well, just how do I fit into this? You fit perfectly. Just go to her and tell her that you're her kid. Tell her of your connection with me. Tell her how you've been working with me. And unless she gives me a mistrial, I'll have to start to do a little blasting. You no, know, it wouldn't look so good for her honor the judge to have a daughter with a police record. You think she'd go for a phony shakedown like that? She will if you uh, show her this. Take a good look. Charming little family group, isn't it? That's your mother, who's now Judge Mary Cabot. It's your father. He was one of my best men. And that's yourself at the age of three. What chance have you got of proving that kid's me? Your birth certificate had your footprint on it. I was going through your father's belongings after he died, and I ran across this picture and a lot of other things. I saved them all for just such an emergency as this. Look, Tim, you'll get no place trying to work anything out of my setup. If she knew I was her kid and you were forcing me to do this, she'd never rest till she put you away for good. I'll take that chance. If you think you're going to use me against my own mother, save your skin, you're crazy. A lot you care whether she's your mother or not. She's still the law, isn't she? To you, maybe. Not to me. You wouldn't understand that. When my father was killed, I found out who I was and who my mother was. I've been broke, hounded by cops, thrown into jail, and kicked around by you and everybody else. She's the only thing I've got to be proud of. Well, you could have gone oh, to... Oh, sure. I could have gone to her long ago and lived on Easy Street. But for how long? Only till you and the gang wanted to use me. And then what? No. I wouldn't go to her for myself, and I'm not going to her for you. Well, suppose I give this little story to the newspapers. I'll deny it. You can't very well deny your own birth record, can you? Then I'll get out of town. I'll hide where you'll never oh, find you me. you haven't got a chance. Oh, listen, kid. Why don't you make it easy for yourself? All you've got to do is to get her to hand down a decision in my favor. And I'll pay you five grand in cash. And then if you want to blow town, nobody will know anything about it. Just you, me, and... I'm not interested. I'll be in my apartment until 10 o'clock. If I don't hear from you by then, you can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Say, Tim, how about slipping us a couple of sawbucks to eat on? We're flat. Say, does Justine ever talk about her people? No. Know anything about her mother? No, I her once, but she said she didn't have any. Then they found her under an incubator. How about that dough, Tim? We need it bad. Your girlfriend doesn't seem to think so. I just offered her five Gs for a little job, and she turned it down. What? Yeah, it's too bad, because it'd spring me out of all this trouble, and things would get rolling again. You know, you could get a piece of that five grand if you get her over to my apartment before 10 o'clock tonight. She'll be there. All right, I'm depending on you. And see that you stay sober until she's actually on the way. Say, I've been on the wagon for three months. You couldn't get a drink into me with a squirt gun. Yeah, well, I'd hate to try it. Hello, Hickey. This is Gert. Send me up a case of my favorite gargle, will you? Yes, I said a case, 12 bottles. And listen, I gotta have change for a century. No, I didn't rob a bank. I just found out what corner Prosperity's been hiding around. Okay, hustle it up, will you? Where'd you get the money? I cried it out of Ryan. What's the matter, honey? You feeling low? I'll be all right. I think I'll go out and walk about 900 miles to clear up this headache. Why don't you lie down and rest a while? I'll wake you up in plenty of time. Time for what? Time to go see Tim. Five G's is a lot of sugar. Now, if you were a green kid and didn't know how to handle yourself, I'd tell you not to go. Of course, I don't know what kind of a job he wants you to pull, but if you get caught, so what? You've been pinched before, and five G's is a lot of sugar. 
It isn't as if our kind had anything to lose. We're nothing. That's the truest thing you ever said. We're nothing. We're not even people. We're just a couple of cheap dogs. But five G is a lot of sugar. What a chump I am for living. This is what I'm living for. Look, kid, I've been through a lot tougher mill than you'd ever dream of. But I'm still in there pitching, ain't I? Why? Why? A girl's got to live, don't she? Sure. Eat, drink, and be merry. For tomorrow we die. That's the rest of it, isn't it? Say, you are low. Come on, snap out of it. You never hear me sing in the blues. When things go wrong, I just laugh it off. Yeah, that's a great way to live. You take all the dirt anybody wants to hand you and just laugh it off. There's nothing personal in that crack, is there? Yes, there is. Do you know what you are? You're me, ten years from now. I don't have to wait to find out how I'll turn out. I'm looking at myself right now. A miserable, cheap wreck of a woman who doesn't dare open her eyes long enough to realize that every day she lives, she sinks that much deeper in the mud. I don't deserve that, kid. Neither do I, and I won't have it. I never realized before today just what I was headed for. Now I see. I think I know the answers. Oh, come on. You're all steamed up. Simmer down. Hinky will be here in a few minutes with the bottles. We could both use a drink. No, thanks. I've got to keep a clear head to see Ryan. Then you're going? Why not? Things that happen to us don't matter, do they? We're not even people. Come in. Earlier than I expected. All right. Ten of the stuff. Where are the originals? Oh, I'm saving those as sort of a protection. You don't trust anybody, do you? Not a soul. And the deal's off. Guess I'll run out of town for a few weeks. Save me the trouble of answering a lot of questions when this story hits the papers. Well, wait a minute. You're not walking out on me, are you? Why not? Nothing else to do. Of course, you know what this will do to your mother. Sure, but this way you're to blame and I'm not. The other way makes me the goat. I like it this way. All right, you win. That's Gertie's. Tell her I'm going to throw it in the river. If I catch her with another one, I'll throw her in. That's the negative of the snapshot. That's your original birth certificate. Okay, I'm on my way. Just a minute. How are you going to get to Judge Cabot's house? Taxi, I guess. Why? Oh, no. I got a better idea. We may as well protect this deal from every angle. Oh, Harper, I want you to come over here right away. Yeah. I want you to take a young lady to a certain address and make sure she gets there and does as she's supposed to do. Yeah, right away. How soon can you make it? No, I can't get anyone else. I'll explain when you get here. This has got to be kept strictly in the family. Justine! Don't do it! Don't! Don't!
How'd you make out, kid? Ditch this for me. What's the idea? I killed Ryan. You what? I couldn't help it. Look, you don't know anything about this, see? No matter what anybody asks you, play dumb. Where are you going? How do I know? Anywhere. New York, if I can make it. How much money have you got? Here's all the dough I got. Now, let me know where to reach you in case you need more. Where's your purse? My purse? Please, maybe. Maybe not. I'll ditch this just in case. I'll go down the fire escape. No, if it's the cops that got the back case anyway, bluff it out. It's the only way. I ought to know I've been through this often enough. Come on. Now, remember, kid, no matter who it is, we haven't been out of the joint tonight. We've been here all evening long bending the old elbow, and I got a couple of empty bottles to prove. Which one of you is Justine West? I am. Going somewhere? She's going away for the weekend. What's it to you? Won't you be lost without your purse? That's not my purse. I never saw it before. We got your address from letters inside this purse. Oh, I remember now. That's that old one that guy grabbed from you that night. Remember? You yeah. better come down to headquarters. Now, wait a minute. You can't come busting in a lady's room and without a warrant and pull a pinch and without any evidence. And I suppose filing her purse in a man's room that's been shot is no longer evidence, eh? How do you know she took it to Ryan's apartment? Purses have been stolen before this. How do you know the man that was shot was Ryan? Come oh. on, sister. Oh, I... And you stay where we can find you. The department has had men watching Ryan ever since he left court this afternoon. Naturally, we didn't expect anything like this to happen. We were interested only in his contacts to see who he might approach for help. But the way it worked out, every step of this job was done under the eyes of the police, except the actual killing. Now, why don't you tell us frankly just what happened in his room? We know when he came to your place this afternoon, and we know when he left. We know when you left your apartment and when you reached his place. We know how long you were with him alone. We know you fired the shot that killed him. Why did you kill him? Uh, what were your relations with Ryan? Do you know the penalty for murder in this state? It's death. Seems kind of strolly to be in here socially. Don't you worry, Gertie. Your cell will be waiting for you. Go ahead. You've got ten minutes. Well, the old homestead hasn't changed a bit, has it, honey? The state's given me a mouthpiece, but give me the lowdown so I can help you, will you? I killed him. Yeah, I know, but why? I just killed him, that's all. Oh, I get it. You got kind of bored sitting around the place with me, so you said to yourself, I got nothing better to do. I guess I'll skip over and shoot Ryan. Is that it? Oh, come on, why did you do it? Listen, kid, I'm only trying to help you if you let me. You aren't afraid of me. You know better than that. I'm not afraid of you. Just got nothing to say, that's all. But you've got to say something. This is murder. They take your life for that in this state. Let them. Remember what you said in our apartment about what happened to us didn't matter. Yeah, yeah, go on. Well, that made me see I had nothing worth living for. But I've got something worth dying for. Well, what is it? What I just said. Sure sounds screwy to me. Screwy? That's it. You're nuts. It's a natural. Listen, stick to that story, kid, and you're as good as from. Watch your step. We got company. This is Mr. Langley, your attorney. Hey, wait a minute. Throw this one back and fish again. The game warden don't let you keep him this young. Who are you? I'm a roommate, but I'm not rooming with her now. Miss West, since you're without funds, I've been appointed by the court to defend you. Now, look here, Junior. I just got through measuring her for a mouthpiece, and it's not you, Sonny Bunkins, not for many long years to come. If you'll tell me, frankly, everything that happened... <laughs> That's the first laugh I've had all week. <laughs> of course, you'll realize that whatever is said between client and counsel is protected by law. It can't even be revealed on the witness stand except by your consent. I have nothing to say. But, Miss West... Ryan's dead. They've got all the proof they need that I killed him. Why well, drag this thing out? Who wants to? But give us a chance and we'll spring you out of here. You must have had some reason for killing him. What was it? 
I thought I was performing a public service by ridding the world of a rat. Well, I'd hang a medal on you for that, but what will a jury do? They'd find you guilty on that statement. So what? Let them. Oh, stop talking that way. You're giving me the jitters. Miss West, if, if you could only give me something to work with. Your case is coming up before the most understanding judge on the bench, Mary Cabot. If you could tell me why you shot him. You must have had a reason. I'm tired. Please let me alone. Please. Nice going, Junior. You don't know any more than when you started, but you're holding your own. Now, my advice to you is to shoot all your marbles on insanity. Put me on the stand and I'll swear that you screw you than a keg of bolts. Oh, the state psychiatrist had knocked that down in no time. Well, we've got to do something. Well, I'll stick around and jabber with the little chatter box for a while. She's dying for somebody to talk to. Well, I hope you have better luck than I did. Thank you. Look, kid, we've got to have action to beat this rap. I don't want action. I don't want anything but to be left alone. I killed him. I killed him. Right down, somebody will hear you. Let him. If I had it all to do over again, I'd do the same thing. Easy, kid, easy. I don't care what they do to me. You'll be all right now. I'm sorry I blew up. I guess I just couldn't stand any more questioning. Forget it, kid. I know how you feel. Everybody talks crazy when they're all tied up in knots. I'll see you later. I must be catching cold or something. Now, officer, will you tell us in your own words what your movements were the night of the murder? Ryan left her place a little after six. Pete followed him, and I stuck around. Then she came out about quarter of seven and grabbed a taxi. I followed her to Ryan's apartment. She entered the place at just five minutes past 7 p.m. I see. Then, uh... Yes, sir, I was running the elevator, and I took up to the third floor where Mr. Ryan lived. Did you hear the shot fired? Yes, sir. What did you do? I went down in the basement, I got my coat and my hat, and I went home. Mr. Harper, you were Mr. Ryan's attorney, were you not? I was. Calling attention to the day Mr. Ryan was killed, where were you at approximately 7.15 that evening? I was in my apartment, just about to have dinner. Mm -hmm. Did anything happen to disturb your dinner? Yes. Will you tell the court what happened? My telephone rang. It was Ryan asking me to come to his apartment immediately. He seemed very insistent, wanted me to drop everything and rush right over. Did Ryan do that? I said something about being at dinner, and I heard him cry out in terror. I heard a bang in the receiver as the phone dropped from his hand. I heard him cry out, Justine, don't, don't, don't do it. And then I heard the shot. Then what? Nothing, just silence. I shouted into the phone, hoping my voice might be strong enough to reach him. But somebody hung up the phone. What did you do then? I dialed the number again. Did anyone answer? Somebody lifted the phone. I shouted, still hoping that it might be Tim. There was no answer. But whoever lifted that phone heard my voice and put it back again, without speaking. I knew then that whoever was with Tim at the time he was killed was still in the room. What did you do then? I telephoned the police. By the time I got there, they were in charge. Oh, we took charge as usual and made out the regular reports. You stated that you caught the defendant trying to leave her apartment. Yes, she had her stuff all packed and everything set for a getaway. I object. I move the answer be stricken from the record on the ground that it is a conclusion on the part of the witness. Objection sustained. On your way out with the defendant, did you find anything in the street below? Yes. Will you tell the court what it was? It was a gun that looked like it had been thrown from a high point. Do you recognize this gun? Yes, this is a gun I picked up. I offer this as State's Exhibit C. It may be admitted in evidence. 
I am positive that this bullet which was extracted from the body of the deceased was fired from this gun. That's all. People rest. Miss West, it's perfectly obvious you're trying to shield someone by your silence. But can't you realize what you're doing to yourself? Won't you please answer the questions that are put to you? Your Honor, I trust the court realizes how difficult my position is with a client who refuses to cooperate. Have you explained the possible consequences? Sure he has. A million times. I told him not to put me on the stand. But I didn't want any defense. Ah, oh, come on. Get this thing over with. Your Honor, would it be too much to ask the court for a recess until tomorrow morning so that I may reason with my client and try to break her silence? Is that agreeable to the prosecution? No objection if it meets with the approval of the court? Request granted. Court is adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Can't you give me something, anything to go on? Nothing can make your case any worse now. Can't you see I'm trying to save your life? I don't care who you're fronting for. You've got no right to take the big rap for him. You're not saving anything for me. I don't want to live. I'm no good, no good at all to myself or to anyone else. I don't want to go back to the way I was living. What's your objection to telling the truth about what happened between you and Ryan? Who are you shielding? If it's a guy, take it from me. They're not worth it. I know. Now get this straight. I'm not going to tell you anything, now or ever. What happened between Ryan and me is my business. If I had a chance to do it over again, I would. You and all the mouthpieces in the world can't get anything more out of me. It's my secret and it's going to die with me. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to get some rest. you better change your thinking. You and your kind have made enough trouble around here. This is no place for gangsters and murderers. Now you get out and stay out. Look, Mother Hubbard, you annoy me. Won't do you no good because the lock's changed. You ain't paid your rent, so I'm within my legal rights to lock you out. All right, big-hearted, I'll get out, but let me get my things. Not until you've paid the rent. Oh, come on, will you? I can't get in a hotel without a bag. Let me take just one, will you? Well, just one. It'll be worth it to be rid of you. Judge Cabot. Judge Cabot. Judge Cabot. Mary Cabot's baby. I've got to see Judge Cabot right away. Judge Cabot is in bed. i got to see her. It's very important. But she left orders she was not to be disturbed. She's got to know something I found out before this case she's trying goes any further. But she can't discuss evidence out of court. Now, I suggest that you take your information to the district attorney or the other attorney, and they'll see that the judge gets it at the proper time. Oh. Good night. Welcome.
Anything you wanted? I got to see Judge Cabot. She sent for me. Let's see the order. What order? If she sent for you to have an order, where is it? Oh, come on. Be a good guy, will you? I got to see Judge Cabot before she opens court. I'm sorry you can't. You'll have to wait till court's adjourned. Hey, you! Come back here! Your Honor, you Judge Cabot, what is it? I told her she couldn't come in here. I got to see you. It's all right, Bailiff. Now, what do you want? This place ain't wired, is it? Of course not. What do you want? It's about the case you're trying. I can't listen to you here. Well, you're going to listen to me right here and now. I'm forbidden to discuss evidence. Then don't discuss it. Just look at it. Where did you get these? I found them at the bottom of Justine West's trunk. Ryan called Justine to his apartment to make her do something about the spot he was in. She killed him to keep that something from being done. All she says now is that she's got nothing to live for, but that she's got something to die for. And that something is you, just as sure as we're standing here. Well, ain't you going to do something about it? Are you going to let her die? She's willing if you are. She's waiting out there right now for you to sentence her to death. Court's ready, Your Honor. Well? Court is now in session. Her Honor, Judge Mary Cabot, presiding. Court, the defense is ready to proceed. If the court please, we're ready to proceed. Just before taking the bench, court received information startling and unexpected in its content. The information discloses that this court is disqualified to try this case by reasons set forth in the Code of Civil Procedure. Court is therefore compelled to declare a mistrial. The case will be transferred forthwith to the presiding judge of the criminal department for further disposition. I got a hunch everything's going to be swell now, honey. What happened, Your Honor? Some state court case. Oh, no statement of any kind. Sorry, boys. That's all. Oh, come on, we must get a story. Come on, boys. Break it up. Come on, quick. Mary, what happened? Please, Stephen, I can't tell you. I'm sending in my resignation to the governor right away. But why, dear? I'm going to defend that girl. Oh, Mary, you're insane. The girl is guilty. You can't possibly save her. Well, I can try, can't I? I can certainly try. My dear girl, you're letting your obsession for the underdog run away with you. That was all right in juvenile court. But you're dealing with crime now. You're dealing with murder. I know. That's why I'm going to fight. Wait a minute. Won't you tell me what this is all about? I don't want to alter your viewpoint. Your duty is clear. You took an oath to perform certain duties. To convict her of murder, if you can. My duty is equally clear. To set her free. Where are you going? To plan the defense of my... my client. Judge Cabot. Please be seated. I'll get some of these books off of this chair. Mr. Langley, I've come to ask if I might be associated with you in the defense of Miss West. With me? Oh, well, take my chair. I'd be proud just to carry your briefcase and listen. Nonsense. You'll do all right. Tell me, what have you learned about the case to date? Oh, not very much. I honestly don't think there's any hope. Oh, there must be. I'm afraid not. She just doesn't want to help. She's fought everything I've tried to do, and she won't say or do anything in her own defense. There must be something we can do. I don't know what. I don't care what means we use, to what lengths we go. She must not be convicted. Her life must be saved. I won't let her die. What do you want here? My darling. Candace sympathy. 
I don't fall for that hearts and flowers line. What's the gag? There's no gag. I know that you're my daughter, Virginia. Your daughter? Whoever sold you a bill of goods like that? Where'd you get that Virginia from? My name's Justine, Justine West. These things were in your trunk. Gertrude brought them to me. I know everything. What do those things prove? Nothing. What do you know? Let have been stuff of my bread and butter. It's my racket, see? You were on our list, only never quite got around to you. It's no use your trying to get rid of me. I'm here to save you, dear, if it's humanly possible. Why don't you get out of here and mind your own business and let me alone? Because I'm not going to let you die. Just to keep the world from knowing who your mother is. <laughs> that mother thing hands me a laugh. Don't try to kid me. I know what you're after. It's a gag. You're trying to get me to talk. All right, I don't mind telling you. They got it hung on me anyway. I killed Ryan. I wanted to kill him. I wanted to get rid of him and myself and everything we stood for. And nothing you or anyone else could do could change what's done. Now, please go away. From now on, we're in this together, dear. You've got no right to wreck yourself or anybody like me. I'm nothing. What happens to me doesn't matter. What happens to you is my whole life. I didn't want you to know. You were all I had left in the world to be proud of. Anything happens to you? Nothing will happen to me. Nothing will happen to you. We'll find a way out. We must find a way out. There isn't a chance. There's always a chance, dear. There's always a chance. Stephen, sit down. Thanks. I to have a talk with you before court opened. Tried to reach you last night. I was with my client. Coffee, please. Mary, let young Langley do most of the talking today. You keep out of it as much as you can. After I've spent all this time preparing? Well, why should I? Well, you haven't a chance of winning. Let young Langley take the beating. Nobody will blame him for losing. Case is wished on him to begin with. The minute you get up, everybody will expect a miracle to happen, and it can't. To make matters worse, I don't want to be the one responsible for your losing your first case as defender. Are you suggesting I should desert that girl at the last minute? If the girl meant anything, if she had the least possible quality of decency or honor, I could understand it. But to see you throw away your career for a cheap little nobody, you just can't do it. Please, Stephen, let me be the judge of that. Mary, do you actually know what kind of a girl this is? Or have you been blindly accepting her story, whatever it may be? Let me tell you the facts. Her father worked under so many aliases, we don't know which was his real name. He raised that girl like a fagin. Trained her to lie, cheat, and steal to become an expert in crime. When he died, Ryan took her into his employ as one of his most valuable workers. Young enough, innocent enough in appearance to fool anybody. Yet with all her youth, a trained, hardened, experienced criminal. Since she's grown older, her special value has become her ability to fool people with her apparent innocence. Don't let her play that on you, Mary. Thanks for the advice, Stephen. I'm still going through with it. <laughs> Sorry. Of course, you must realize I'm going to do everything in my power to convict that girl. Of course. That's your duty. I wouldn't respect you if you didn't. Aren't you going to wish me luck? Why, certainly. Bye, darling. I will call Justine West to the stand for the defense. Raise your right hand. You saw me swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Your full name? Justine West. You may be seated. Miss West, I want you to answer all my questions clearly and simply, so there will be no doubt as to the truth of your replies. Will you do that? Yes. What was the nature of your work with Mr. Ryan? Well, I... Answer quite honestly, so that everyone may know. I did what I was told. He told you to sell lottery tickets? You sold lottery tickets? Yes. 
If he told you to do anything, you did it. Yes. Why? Ever since I can remember, I've been around places where things like that happened. Let's get this very clear. You were brought up in the company of crooks and racketeers who thought nothing of breaking the law if they could make money by it, who thought nothing of using you to make that money. Is that right? Yes. When Ryan came to your apartment the day on which he was killed, what crime did he want you to commit? He wanted me to blackmail someone. Did you consent? No. But he told me I'd have to. He gave me until 10 o'clock to do it. Or he'd give everything to the newspapers. Give what to the newspapers? Something he knew about someone dear to me. Did you go to Ryan's apartment before 10 o'clock? Yes. Why? I thought if I could get certain records he had away from him, I could run out on him, destroy them, keep out of sight myself. I didn't get away with it. Why not? He called his lawyer to guard me to the place. While he was phoning, I saw my chance, grabbed the stuff, and stuck at the fireplace. What did he do? He grabbed the poker and struck at me. I ducked back, got hold of the gun. I didn't even see it was a gun. I was so scared, I just grabbed. He struck again, knocked the gun out of my hand, and it went off. He was dead. Then you did not go to Ryan's apartment to kill him, but to try and prevent the crime of blackmail? Yes. You were dragged into the whole sordid mess because Ryan wanted you to commit a crime that you were determined never to allow. Yes. You did not kill Ryan. Ryan was trying to kill you, and in striking the gun, became his own executioner. Yes. Your witness. And so you've been wrong all the way through two long trials, believing you to be a criminal, when all the time your actions were high and noble and beautiful and pure. Is that what you want us to believe? Yes. All right, let's get to the bottom of it. Number one, you say that Ryan wanted you to blackmail someone. Whom did he want you to blackmail? Well, surely you remember who it was. Your mind gone blank? Who was it Ryan wanted to blackmail? Answer the question. Isn't it true that the person Ryan wanted to blackmail does not exist? Isn't it true that no such person ever existed? Defense counsel described your background so clearly that I feel unable to improve upon the picture that she has drawn. That of a girl born to crime, raised to crime, and taught to gain her living by lying, cheating, and flaunting the law. I'm sure the jury believes that completely. But do you also want them to believe that this same criminal, this same cheat, tried to protect the honor of another person? Yes. No further questions. The defense rests. We appear to have ample time to begin the closing addresses. Are you ready? Ready, Your Honor. You better let me talk to them. You're tired, upset. I must do this. Nobody else. Sit down, Junior. <laughs> Don't be afraid, darling. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in my former capacity as judge, I learned to respect the law, which is, after all, the time-tested, crystallized opinion of all the people as to what is right and what is wrong for our people in this society. So greatly do I respect the law for its fairness and justice that I'm going to ask you to weigh the exact words of the law which governs this case. I quote from the Penal Code, Section 197. Homicide is justifiable when committed in defense of habitation, property, or person against one who intends by violence or surprise to commit a felony. The defendant has testified that she was attempting to prevent Ryan from committing the crime of blackmail when he attacked her with a poker and was killed, attempting to kill her. 
justifiable against one who intends by violence to commit a felony. If you believe the defendant told the truth, that she was defending someone from blackmail at the time of Brian's death, then you must set her free. The prosecutor has made it very plain that he does not believe there was any such person in this case. I know there is. The person she was protecting and is still protecting is her mother. A woman known and respected by all as a model of integrity and incorruptible honor, whose life and work and fine ideals seemed so well worth saving that this heroic girl locked her secret within herself and chose to go to her death as a murderess rather than cause this woman to be publicly branded as the mother of a criminal daughter. Let me picture for you this fine woman that this girl would lay down her life to save. First, young and frivolous, eloping with a man she'd known only a few weeks, thinking only of herself, nothing of the heartbreak of the family she left behind to sorrow for her. Three years after her baby girl was born, she learned that her husband was a criminal. Too proud to admit to her friends and family of the failure of her marriage, she left her husband and baby and tried to hide away from the world. When she realized what a blind coward she'd been, she returned, only to find the home empty, her baby gone. For 17 years, that mother watched and waited for some word of her baby, counted the years as they passed, thinking of her child growing up, guided by a criminal father, but never certain whether she was alive or dead. Until the day came when she stood, charged with murder, waiting for me, her mother, to condemn her to death. I did not know her. I did not recognize my own baby. If there be any guilt, that guilt is mine. I'll never forget the last time I had candles on a cake. Uh -huh. I demanded a recount. Oh, <laughs> oh it's beautiful. <laughs> now I must blow out the candles and see how many more years before you're married. Oh, but Mother, I'm supposed to do that. Oh, of course, darling. I'm sorry. I've been doing it for you for so long, I quite forgot. Do <laughs> you mean to tell me you've been having these dinners all the time right along? Mm-hmm. Every year. Boy. When I think of the times we could have used a good dinner, not knowing one was going to waste. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, hurry up. Don't keep us in suspense. All right. Now. Big breath. Good. Oh. <laughs> Only one more year to go. Good. <laughs> See what happened to those candles? And if they're telling the truth, a year from tonight, you're going to be a very lonesome woman. Unless you listen to reason. I'm really a very reasonable woman. When you get to know me. Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to do now? Cry or kiss you? But what do you think? 